On a barf bag, wow, great touch. Dear Dramamine, hello, my name is, is Bruce Kelly. I'm writing you on behalf of the barf bag community. Have you ever used a barf bag before? Never did, I used the ground. Use the ground? That's it, just throw it up and that's it. You gotta blow in it first time. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they'll just like lay here and just kind of it was jalapeno linguine. Mm. But it just comes out and it sprays all over Felipe. It's just this queasy, uneasy, awful. Are you good? <laughs> yep. Cool. Yep. And it came through my nose. Like, oh, there go. there's got to be a special term for that. That's called nasal pharyngeal reflux. Nausea is the unpleasant sensation of being about to vomit. Vomiting is the forceful expulsion of gastric contents. Upchuck, throw up, hurl, puke, spew, blowing chunks, blowing bits, chunky bits. Your tummy hurts, you force the contents up your esophagus, out your mouth. Wow. <coughs> this is the current bag from KLM, Dutch Airlines. It's a, it's a Dutch house. Lan Chile, Iberia. A lot Polish airline. Oh, it, it, every bag you see here is a different airline. Wow. So these are the bags. They're all alphabetized, they're all in binders. I could go into any one of these and show and flip through them and show you ones that I think I like. Apparently you throw up and then disappear. <laughs> and there, there it is, Fin Aviation. It's kind of humorous. You see a see a reindeer throwing up. This is one of the bags that any collector would, would love to have. The reindeer logo barfing ice cubes. Yeah, barf bags come in a lot of different things. Here's uh, Cannibal Girls vomit bag. Cannibal Girls again, they brought out two types. And oh, the third one. Ah, some of these are old friends. I haven't seen them for a while. There's a professor uh, who is an expert in Middle Ages Latin at UT. And I said, what is a dignified name for airsick bags? And he came up with the term nausevat. I think that's what they should be called. And I'm a uh, nausevatologist. This is not a barf bag, it's a nausevat. The man who invented the barf bag as we know it today was, um, you could say he was a scientist, his name was Gil Gilmore Sheldell. When I say you could say he was a scientist, he was totally self-taught. He got 16 patents for his work in thermoplastics and resins and polymers, but never graduated high school, let alone college. And the reality was that, you know, in those days, in the late 40s, you were going to get a very bumpy, smelly, gassy, oily ride. There's a lot of turbulence, a lot of people got sick, and obviously he saw the this is the very first graduating class when the airline started. We had the graduation on the Queen Mary, which is really cool. One time I was walking to the back of the plane, it was super turbulent, and somebody was trying to get to the bathroom to throw up, and they actually barfed, and it went into my shoes. And I'm walking to the back of the plane, I'm literally sloshing, my feet are coming out of the shoes, going slosh, <laughs> Part of it, part of my collection is to collect, to collect something, that no one else collects, that's number one. Number two is I like collecting things that when they are made, they are not intended to be collected. They are, I mean, there's, I think in this world, there's a lot of what I call phony collectibles, things that are made to be collect, you know, the limited edition, this or that. And there can't be a more uh, a pedestrian fixture than, than an air sickness bag because they are definitely made to be thrown away. It's got the right level of absurdity. They're easy to collect because they're flat. And you know, some people, it's it's interest. Some people like you guys, I, I don't believe it, but you find it interesting. So it's great. Is there a holy grail barf bag in the collector world? I will get it for you. So you see a picture of a spaceman on there? That is from the space shuttle. Have you taken it out of there? I have never taken it out of there. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, ask, uh, yeah, I don't want to ask. I might do it if I, if I. So you see, it's got the spaceman and the raspberry drizzle and the part number and all that official NASA stuff. And uh, look at that. I'm a little afraid to take this out any more than that. Cool. But 
That's thank you. Thank you for uh, urging me to do that because I've wanted to do that for a while, but just never had the. Actually, you know, I don't think about it day to day, but. <laughs> well, it, it has not been a good pickup line, put it that way. It's people. People look at me, sort of. Would you say that again? When you use it, you look down at the beautiful painting. In contrast, most air sick bags are like this. So when you use them, the picture is upside down. It actually started after we were together and we were traveling. And he tells a story of how he was bored on the airplane and he started looking at the reading material and there wasn't that much in the pocket, but he was intrigued with the barf bags. And he thought, nobody collects these. I think I should. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you start a collection, it's hard to give it up. You know, it's, it's there. You look at a bag and you don't have it. And you think, well, I can't let this one slip through my fingers. So these are all my collection, all these binders. And just open one up. They're all in individual sleeves. Right now I've got about 7,500 different ones from about 1,000 different airlines. The older bags, you can't even find them anymore. Nobody saved them. Very difficult to find them. Processing. What are you printing? A graph that's charting the growth we've seen in Dramine cells and the inverse relationships of bar bags. So I've never actually seen it laid out like this, but the, the connection can't be clear. Do you think it's possible that Dramamine is actually killing off the barf bag? I'm measured on numbers, so <laughs> I'd be pretty excited because that means we're growing. And, you know, um, we're doing well and I'm doing something right. It's been great. I mean, great growth. We've been growing our product line and launching a lot of new products to help people. So it's been amazing. When we go to the stores and we see all of the product that we produce here and to see how it helps a lot of people with the nausea, it feels great to say like, oh my God, this is what we make. You see the hard work of everybody, how it pays off when you actually see it in the store. So it's, it's pretty cool. What's really moved the needle uh, in the fight against motion sickness has been innovation. New forms, um, new ingredients that fit in the nausea space, um, and then dressing it up, trying to make it taste good and, and uh, deliver something that consumers want. Dear Dramamine, hello, my name is Bruce Kelly, and I've been collecting barf bags for many years. I'm writing you on behalf of the barf bag community. We've noticed for a while that quality barf bags are getting harder to find. People rarely use them anymore, and they certainly don't appreciate them. Your product works well, but we wonder if it maybe works a little too well. If people aren't barfing, they aren't using barf bags. I recently read that 2024 is the 75th anniversary of Dramamine. You might be surprised to know that another great American invention turned 75 this year, the barf bag. Maybe this isn't a coincidence. Maybe their two fates are intertwined. To us, it's always been more than just a barf bag. Like Dramamine, it's a monument to American ingenuity and problem solving. And it's been a wonderful way to meet lifelong friends. Reach out anytime if you'd like to chat. Sincerely, Bruce Kelly, Barf Bag Collector. Wow. How would you respond to the statement, Dramamine is killing the barf bag? <laughs> Man, Dramamine sucks. <laughs> if they they died, uh, they should die with dignity rather than disregarded or joked about. It seems to me Dramamine is killing the barf bags. If you could save them, would you? Not for barfing, because like I said, I'm kind of anti-barf. Um, but yeah, I think there's so many 
ways to use the bag that don't have to have someone getting sick. And I think that'd be fun and it'd also keep the history alive. It's a fresh day, it's a nice day to dance with you. It's a sunny day, it's a lovely day to sing with you. All your worries will disappear. If you dance and sing without any fear. Hi, Eli. This is Erica with Drumming. How are you? Let me turn up the volume. Okay. You were saying that you were planning to move. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 82, and uh, we're in a house that requires uh, a lot of tending, and so do we. So we're going to a retirement community. What are you planning to do with your collection? Uh, I'm interested in uh, disposing of it because we just don't have room. Well, we definitely have an idea and we'd love to acquire your collection and have it here at the Drawing headquarters for Great. people to be able to view it and enjoy it. And of course, you're welcome to come and see it whenever you want. Um, but yeah, we'd, we'd like to offer to acquire it. That's wonderful. I, I, uh, I think we'll both be better off. No, I think it's going to be great and it's going to give more people an opportunity to view your collection. Yes. Uh, d d have you heard the term nausea It's a fresh day. It's 